Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Elite Eight round of the Mildred Burke Invitational here on GLOW. And I am Remarkable Randall Reigns, and I want to bring in our color commentator, com commentator Mr. Hamrick, to begin our look at our Elite Eight Heading on the road to the semifinals on our road to St. Valentine's Massacre, where we will crown a new Glow Crown Champion. Welcome, Mr. Hamrick. And as always, the pleasure is all yours. And a second thing I want to add real quick. <coughs> you have not called me a common terror since... About two weeks ago. <laughs> so, tonight, we are in the Elite Eight. And that leads very quickly to our semifinals. Eight become four here tonight. And we are starting things off with Tazila Mathila versus Tony Sweets. Now, you and I were talking about this before we began the broadcast, and we were discussing the momentum that Tony Sweets seems to be riding since her entry into the Glow Crown Tournament. Uh, she has two, um, honestly, you could argue, surprising victories, especially over the senior, the veteran, Brittany Glam and Yvette DeSoto going into this Elite Eight round. Uh, Tony Sweets is riding a big wave of momentum, but you got to think about who she is getting ready to come up against. It's a and, and I, I absolutely agree with you on that. While Tony Sweets has a a pair of stunning victories over two very well-established veterans, one of them a former champion, if I recall correctly. Yes. And and who has been in contention for that for both the Glow Crown and the WWWN Women's title on multiple occasions. I mean, yeah, you can argue, you can't argue that she is riding a wave of momentum. However, I think she is about to get caught up in a undercurrent and have a wipeout on that wave at the hands of Tazila Mathila. And Tazila has been very strong in her uh, matches throughout the uh, uh, tournament. And she has made that Eurekin back fist quite possibly one of the most devastating maneuvers in the GLOW division. And tonight, we're going to see Tazila versus Tony, who moves forward. Let's take and, this to ringside. And as we're getting to ringside, the other thing I wanted to add to that is the, the deadly factor about that back fist is that Tazila has a uncanny combination of strength and power yes. that she delivers with that back And Tony Sweets going to be the first competitor out in this Elite Eight round. And she does not appear to be sweating the uh, challenge well, it, it's hard to tell if she's sweating at all with that black light going on, but, I mean, that's another story entirely. Well, with Tony, she is coming out very excited, very animated. The crowd has really fallen in love with Tony Sweets and her ability both in the ring and as an entertainer. And, I mean, Tony has legit 
legit impressed me in this tournament, but the definition of, well, <laughs> impression can honestly be felt here with Tazila Mathila. She has left an impression of knuckles on the side of several people's faces in this tournament. She has left several impressions of various Right, some of those have been uh, the knuckle impression on the jaw of their opponents. But you can't argue that this woman's ability in the ring has been impressive. And in my opinion, oftentimes a simple pleasure to watch her Yes, definitely. She, uh, she comes into this, uh, early, this tournament pretty much a mystery. Getting ready to face Tony Sweets. Our first match of the Elite Eight round here. And there is the bell. And a sharp kick by Tony. And whoa, Tony going for a move that we really don't see anymore. A variation of the stump puller. And Tazila taking the head scissors down and dropping the knee and repeating the knees on to Tony Sweets. And Irish whip by Tazila. The knee is caught by Tony. And a cravat attempt. And up and over the rope. Abs fast paced action here by Tony Sweets and Tazila Mathila. And I, I can almost not keep up with what's going on in the ring here. But I. Definitely think that these two women came into this match ready for one another and I mean we're seeing uh, an attempt just basically to try to get the advantage as quick as possible and, and probably rightfully so. And Tony attempting a bow and arrow lock with Tazila getting out. Oh and a snap there right into the knee and that has that has uh, appeared to upset uh, Tazila Mathila, sent Tony to the outside, and now back inside, Atomic Drop. Tony Sweet on fire here, trying to, that, that momentum that we talked about, it, she is riding it high, hoping that it is going to carry her to victory. Well, I, the, the thing you've also gotta, gotta understand is Tazila Mathila, is used to taking her share of blows in combat. Like you said, she is a warrior, and she is known to take as to give as much as she gets and get as much as she. And, well, she gives as much as she gets, and usually a bit more than she gets when she wins. And several times, Tony has utilized that knee and neck breaker combination and almost to a dizzying degree and now Tony uh, almost appearing a little bit out of breath after this fast paced action and, and I, was, I was about to comment on that same thing oh. that you've, you've got to wonder if Tazila is merely weathering it the flurry of offense from this young lady to and, and just letting her wear herself out. And it, if that is the case, then it might be working to Sela. Wait a minute. Went for the belly to belly, caught a headbutt instead. Irish whip. And now Tazila may be at the mercy of Tony. Tony bringing uh, Tazila bringing Tony in. And now fast rabbit punches and a European uppercut following up with a German suplex. Big, big offense by Tazila Mathila. 
And now following this up running through, Tony with clotheslines and a single leg sweep there. I mean, wow. Tazila on the comeback trail. And Tony getting caught. Oh, look at these knees. Merciless. And whoa. Yeah, careful, careful with using that word there. Sonya Mercer might try to file some friendly claim. And wait a minute, wait a minute. Pump handle drop and cover to kick out by Tazila. And yes, yeah, Sonya Mercer is not someone that I want to be on the bad side of either. But that was there's only a few ways to describe those knee shots in the corner. Tony Sweets taking a breather and uh, looking like she is up on the top, and oh, she glances, misses the elbow, misjudges the distance. That, yeah, that's she overshot that, and and I mean, of course, Tazila was crawling out of the, the range the entire time Tony was getting up. I don't think she noticed. And now Tony, wait a minute, wrapping up Tazila. Looks like she's going for a jumping DDT, and it is in the center of the ring. Tony Sweets is going to try to capitalize here and going for a, looks like she's going for a moonsault, but that taunt in front of that moonsault may have cost but her an opportunity. I don't, I don't know if that was a taunt or if that was her just steadying herself to make that moonsault. I mean, you've got to think she's not necessarily of the most powerful young lady on our roster and her to execute that kind of a moonfall might take a little um, prep on her part. And a head scissors from the top rope headstand it she, places Mathila in the center of the feeling, ring. You can tell she's feeling the exhaustion and, that set in here. Tony looking to connect here got Tazila up and We've seen her win with this backpack stunner. And she looks like she is going to try to bring Tazila closer to the center of the ring. Referee is counting one, two, kick out. And th this is the kind of resiliency I was about with Tazila Mafila. She proven she can take a pretty good bit of punishment for just about everyone she's been in there with. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tazila attempted to connect with that Eurekin and all she hit was air. I think that's the first time that we've seen that miss. And it, it is, but it's also, I mean, Tony had that move scouted and and may have, you know, she may have had the presence of mind to back away. She may have just gotten lucky. And now Tony really working over to Zila here and she has uh, gotten first blood with the backpack stunner that we know is one of her trademark moves and she is attempting to still capitalize as a trade shot and that last shot was that you're quick cover one two, two and a kick out and you're talking about first blood there I, you gotta think Tazila just got some blood back herself, but Tony was in the ropes right there, and I mean, it's if the ref should have even been, been counted. Incredible walking springboard front drop kick, and now wait, Tony tried, got her up, backpack stunner, part two, and looking, hoping, praying that this might be the victory she needs. And no, and the there, frustration. There is, there is that resiliency. What is, there is yep. that resiliency coming in again. And wait a minute, Tazila can't, oh, what a spear. An interesting combination of a knee to the gut, following it up with a running spear. And now, wait a minute, wait a minute, transitioning into an arm bar and just going move after move. I mean, big, 
Whoa, wait, wait. Northern Light Suplex. And she didn't bridge, and that's got to be a symptom I, of exhaustion there. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know could have held that bridge like she may have wanted right there. And now, linking in that surfboard, stretching the shoulders. Try to do what she can to wear down to Zila. But I, you know, I don't know how well that's going to work. And Tony, oh, there it is again. Will the second time be the charm? Cover. One. Two, three, and Tazila Mathila. And I, and I tell you, she can hit that machine. Hits that out of nowhere. And I mean, it's like I said earlier, she has got an uncanny combination of speed and power. And I'll add unpredictability to her delivery of that move. She can hit it just about any point she wants. And I mean, there, you've got a 50-50 chance. Tony Sweets does not look happy walking away. Very dejected there. And who can I, blame I her? Think she, I think she felt she had that match a couple of times. And, I mean, who knows? When Maybe we'll see these two go at it again in the future. And speaking of, congratulations to Zila Mafila. You are moving on to the semifinals of the Mildred Burke Invitational for the Glow Crown, and we will know who will be joining you very shortly. Our next match, ladies and gentlemen, will feature one of the Worldwide Wrestling Network originals in Desiree Howling Wolf, and everyone knows that we are uh, in our own way, rooting for the hometown girl, but we cannot, we cannot express enough how impressed we have been with Rosé as one of the individuals who has come in as a part of the Mildred Burke Invitational, as a part of the New Talent Initiative here in the Worldwide Wrestling Network, and she is facing off against the young lioness, the the poster girl, in many ways, of the Worldwide Wrestling Network Young Lioness Division. Well, and... not, not just not just the Young Lioness Division. I would argue she is quickly becoming the poster girl for our entire women's division. At okay. least as far at least as far as the new generation or current generation of our women's division. And that an argument could certainly be made for that. And with Rosé coming in, Rosé going to be facing off against Desiree Hallingwolf and Rosé moving past uh, Zeandria Washington and uh, showing just how, uh, I guess, dangerous she can be. Um, it is going to be a heck of a barn burner match between Rose and Desiree Howling Wolf coming up. It is the WWN original versus the new incoming talent initiative here on Glow. And let's take it to ringside. Wrestling Network. 
very much so would not disagree with that statement at all, as Desiree Alley Wolf has really endeared herself to the worldwide listening network. But it, 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 it's yeah. cannaboid, so it, that, uh, that's yeah. Well, I think I think this next woman's in, uh, smoking this next woman's interest might maybe uh, make it even worse for you. Um, and Rose was a part of the recently defunct Gorilla Affair Wrestling, one of their major women's champions, and Al. Identify the wolf has a spirit animal of her 
She does. She has talked about that at length before. And she's going to the top rope with that diving tomahawk chop and caving in the forehead of Rose. Quick cover. And Rose, with great resiliency, getting up after a dominant display by Desiree Hallingwolf. And Desiree got a handful of hair, putting Rose in the head. Wait, she taking her to the outside again. Is she, she's not going to do this again. Off the ropes and, I, oh my God. Nope, that's Wrecking a, ball, that was two a, feet that was right a, to the face. Yeah. I mean. And again, I, and again, I think that's going to the, to what I said a minute ago. She's trying to do stuff Rose wouldn't expect her to do. And, and I think a lot of these fans would not expect her to do. Rose catches Desiree with the guillotine, following it up with that hip toss and that knee strike. Both of these ladies do employ the use of their lower limbs, particularly knee strikes in their repertoire, and trying to put away Desiree with that TKO cover. And no, Howling Wolf gets the shoulder up. And she seems, she's showing some resiliency of her own right there. And, uh, and I mean, we've, we've seen in the past, though, she's not an easy woman to keep down. And oh, Rose, full of fire, and oh, a sling blade, this throwing herself completely full momentum into Howling Wolf. But wait a minute, Desiree picking up Rose, that's the end of the trail. Cover. Let's see if it's One, the end right here. One, two, three. It is and the end. Desiree Howling Wolf eliminating Rose, <laughs> picking up the victory, moving on to the final four. Desiree Howling Wolf has said the WWN is not out of the Glow Crown Tournament yet. And is it moving into the final four of the Mildred Burke Invitation. And ladies and gentlemen, up and we've, next. Uh, we've already seen we've already seen Tazila and Mafila advance and we will be finding out in these next two matches who they will be facing in the semifinals. And ladies and gentlemen, I I know that this has been an odd evening. Usually we uh, broadcast on uh, Tuesdays, but we want to make sure that these finals are ready so that we will be able to host our uh, St. Valentine's Massacre event on March 3rd. I know that we'll be a couple of days late outside of February, but St. Valentine's Massacre is March 3rd, and the finals of the Mildred Burke Invitational will be the co-main event for the Glow Crown Championship. And, and since, since you brought up those finals, we should let people know that the semifinals that's will right. be broadcast on Melee and Cyclone this coming week. That is true, and those episodes will be coming in an abbreviated version um, with uh, a few shorter matches, a uh, few less matches than normal, simply because we won't be able to bring to you the best quality that we can for St. Valentine's Massacre because it is such a big event. But we will be having Cyclone Saturday Night and um, Monday Night Melee next week in order to make sure that folks know everything that is going down for St. Valentine's Massacre. Well, and another, and another factor on those shorted, shortened shows the week before a big event like St. Valentine's Massacre, we want to make sure our talent that is booked on that card is ready to go. They are completely healed up, they're healthy and able to do their best at that event. Exactly, exactly, because St. Valentine's Massacre is going to be such a big event. We will be doing some recapping of some things that we have seen leading into 
uh, St. Valentine's Massacre on both Melee and Cyclone. And we will be also hosting the semifinals of the Mildred Burke Invitational leading into the finals on March 3rd at St. Valentine's Massacre. But with that, we got to know who's going to be in those semifinals. And so we have got to move on. And ladies and gentlemen, we have got a match and a half. What can we say? Over the last few uh, matches with both of these ladies, Jada Storm and Asha the Conqueror, they have both displayed quite a bit of, I, I, to borrow a phrase, I hope we don't get a cease and desist, but they both displayed a, quite a bit of ruthless aggression here. And um, Asha has legitimately injured uh, Billie Jean Payne. She took Liberty Washington to the limit. I mean, and, and, and to be and to be perfectly honest, we don't know following that match what condition Liberty Washington is in. That is very true. We have not really heard from our trainers or follow up. Liberty Washington was sent home to recover for a few uh, for a few days, and that has spanned into a week. Uh, we well, have not yet that, heard that's from also Liberty. That has also been due to, I mean, the ongoing tournament. Yeah, uh, it's very true. The ongoing tournament matches. But Liberty was sent home at more so as a safety and health precaution to make sure she's not injured the way that Billie Jean Payne uh, was flat out injured by Asha the Conqueror. And that leads us to Jada Storm, who entered this tournament literally on fire as to uh, basically <laughs> take out Kinsey Corvin, Corvin for running her mouth a little too much and then <laughs> in her second match she just it was it was a brutalization I mean it was a great match but Jada was in control for most of it really showing why she is such a multi-time and very decorated champion in virtual wrestling and this is going well, to be a that, car crash and the other the other factor on that second round match that match was to the extent that kelly kazarian felt she had to grab a ball bat uh to, just out of frustration and and which i mean it's, it caused it's like she entered, it's like kelly entered survival mode you know? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, uh, we, we know we know a little she, bit about Kelly's her, history. She, uh she, yeah, she's she went a, to her she basically fell back to her street fighting roots. And and, and if, they called Jada Storm the Iron Queen. They call her that for a reason. That is very true. And Jada Storm very clearly stated that when she entered this tournament, she was in belt collection mode. And I Will the will the Iron Queen be able to slay the Conqueror next? Let's take it to ringside. And Asha the Conqueror makes her entrance out first. First time that I saw her utilize that top rope power bomb, that that was one of the most frightening things that I have witnessed as a broadcaster. That top rope power bomb is what put Billie Jean Payne on the show. Yes, very yes, and the booking officials, the championship committee have been up in the air about whether or not that maneuver should be banned due to its dangerous nature. Uh, they, they just have not come to a decision on that yet. But I, I'm honestly afraid of who is going to have to be the one to tell Aja that move may be banned if it is uh, stricken from the approval list of maneuvers that can be attempted. Well, I, I can think of 
have a handful of people who I don't think would have a problem telling Acha that move is banned. And we are about to see one of them make her way to the ring. And that is very true. Asha coming out with that Mastodon helmet. And now waiting, almost chuckling. Asha the Conqueror is at the prospect of facing Jada Storm. Which I don't know if that is a, an appropriate reaction to the prospect of having the weather in Jada. Uh, and Jada Storm coming to one of the more dramatic entries that we have in full on this endeavor to entry this big cloud of a haze we kind of see. Well, we, we know a couple of other people in the roster who have that kind of an entry and I, from what I know, Jada has indicated she doesn't particularly have a, uh, want anything to do with this. Yeah, very uh, I am, uh, know that it's very open. And Jada breaking free and running down the right side of the old chair, they slide it away. All focus from Jada Storm in this piece. A match. I mean, Jada looks cool and collected here, but Asha always intimidating. And Asha, oh, starting things off with a big front slam, taking down Storm. Storm with the deep arm drag, and whoa, that open hand slap right to the Conqueror, but the Conqueror takes, whoa. Locking in a single leg camel clutch, but look at Jada elbow. Right, that was like right in the eye socket. Yeah, but, this I is mean, but brutal. Nacha had a counter. This match, this has been a hard hitting match straight out the gate, and I don't think it's gonna let up. And Storm taking the Conqueror to the outside, trying to get a stomp in big. Body block taking down Jada. And Jada, wait a minute. Smartly going for the legs, attacking that that eye that I think was uh, the point of the elbow got in while she was escaping the uh, camel clutch that she was yeah. in. And now, just, wait a minute, wait a minute. Big slam! And the power game of Asha the Conqueror. Wait a minute, again, going to that eye. And I, and I Jada. Think, I think Jada has a means to, to neutralize the size difference between her and Asha. Jada may have found that weakness. Effect. She's using that, that neutralization to great effect here. And now going to the spine and we've seen this combination before this catch style influence and got in in that wrist arm breaker and dropping the knee right across the lumbar of the conqueror following and up with oh my god beautiful combination there reminds me a lot of erwin roberts and i would honestly like to see jada and erwin mix it up oh, due to I, the similarities of their uh, their repertoire that they've got. Well, I, I think that that has a likelihood of happening even if Jada doesn't win the title. If she stays around, there's a good chance she and Erwin Roberts will cross paths sooner rather than later. And again, breaking out by taking that elbow right to the right eye socket and that hip toss almost like a suplex. By Jada Storm. I mean, well that, that, well, that hip toss is also 
I, it's almost reminiscent of a judo throw as well. Yes. And, I mean, it, it's it's kind of that that gray area between a hip toss and a judo throw. And but oh, it also, it's also beautiful combination there by Storm. It's, it's effective because it's using Asha's weight against you. And Asha with the leg sweep taking down Storm, and a tilt and a gut kick, and now Jada with the leg sweep. And I think that this is, wait a minute, she's turning her over, wait a minute, good God almighty, look at that, that scorpion a, hold. And that is a display of power on the part of Jada, but I mean, I don't think she could keep her held up there for that very long, for that long. And oh, ooh, choke slam and backbreaker cover, one. Two, kick out. Just under a two count. And Storm attacking the leg of the Conqueror. And, oh! Unique drop kick to the abdomen by Jada Storm. And now Jada. Reminiscent of Jeff Hardy. Reminiscent of something oh, like Jeff Hardy. What a cutter combo, stunner, taking down the giant, and, and that's it! Jada Storm is going to the final four. And that, I gotta say, I think that the my socket attack, that was something of I think, I think that whiffers right. that. I think it's right, right here. And I'm, I'm just getting set. I'm just getting more of a headset that in the semi-finals, we are getting Jada Storm and Desiree Howling Wolf. And that will air on Monday Night Melee. Storm versus Howling Wolf on the main event of Monday Night Melee. And that means that Tazila Mathila will face the winner of this next match, Unbreakable Emery Jade versus the Psycho Tiffany Razor. And, and I, I have a feeling we're going to see just how unbreakable t that Emery Jade is in this match. Because, I mean, we're talking about a woman who likes breaking things and people. That That, that is very true. I saw her literally taking apart the locker. Uh, I wasn't in the women's locker room. I, the door was open and she was I, I mean meticulously taking apart every piece of the locker. Like studying I, it. I'm not, I've, I'm not even going to discuss what I saw in the parking lot. I don't think the Statue of Limitations is up on what I saw. And, I mean, I, she, Tiffany Razor, is methodical, but very unbalanced. Uh, and I, I, I definitely will agree with that statement. She is methodical. She is meticulous. She's a capable performer in the ring, but mentally, she is one, she is more mentally unstable, I would argue, than Chloe Bain. Well, that's a and tall that order. Is saying something. That is a tall order, Mr. Hamrick. Uh, but it, I think in the experience that I've had that Tiffany Razor just might be able to bring that with a side of fries. And then we've got Emery Jade, a, a decorated women's wrestler in virtual wrestling has only been around for a little while but has been a fire plug just and literally attempting to live up to that moniker of unbreakable unbreakable physically unbreakable but spiritually just and wanting mentally. to prove that she can handle anything that is thrown her way and, and she is going to have the opportunity to prove that tonight. And so, without further ado, 
let's take this to ringside. Unbreakable Emery Jade versus Tiffany Razor. And Emery Jade making her appearance first. Emery has, from what I understand, Emery has really only utilized only a little bit of her repertoire that she has made famous Hello? throughout her throughout the community. I in our I tournament. I have actually heard a story to the fact, I don't know if this, how accurate this is, but that, that she was hesitating on using her infamous finisher, the Emerald City Driver, because she didn't know if it was allowed in the tournament or not. And, and I don't know why it would be, but I mean, she... Apparently there was there was some confusion on that and I don't know if anyone has told her. But but props to her for erring on the side of caution because we do know that there are a few moves that are um we are banned. They are basically right. illegal maneuvers within the World Wide Wrestling Network and they and, are and used we're, could we're, lead to disqualification. And we are we are free to you know, uh, Open about what those moves are, but we're you know, it's not a very long listening thing. And Tipping Razor, the orphan, all the bandits who traversed into the psyche and came out as this Razor in front of us, this living embodiment. Yes. Uh, well, I, 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 we, we can use I, a lot of terms. We can say it's We can also say so cheap that, but that, I mean, neither of us clinically qualified to make that And the thing that is, is that she, the thing that keeps me from saying psychopath or sociopath is that there is such a method to her own madness and wait a minute both of them starting out oh what a headbutt that looked like they had each other scouted fairly well and tiffany razor very intelligently using that veteran status to go for a cover quickly and look at this chop exchange back and forth knee well, strike and up and over the top rope emory jade you capitalizing fast you bring up an interesting point on Tiffany Razor. For all that we have seen about her antics, her uh, the way she does things in the locker room and in the general area of the arena, we know that this woman is quite intelligent. And I mean, while we say she does have that air about her, there is, as you mentioned, that, that intelligence that this could all be a psychological game she is playing, not just with her opponent, but anyone that she has to to get over, you know, to, to get success in this business. And one thing that is not a and game is these cross faces that she is hammering into Emory J. We saw it on the outside and now back inside the ring. Emory to Oh my! Good God Almighty! And, Is that a robot driver? And we're we're finding out just how unbreakable Miss Emery Jade is this evening. Tiffany Razor dropping Emery Jade with a cravat driver and just strangling the oxygen right out of her, and now catching her with a variation of that buzzsaw DDT. Not that, quite that, all of it, but it's certainly a hammerlock. But I, I, that DDT would have made Gas Corvin proud right there. And now... I know he's used a version of it uh, periodically in his tenure in the business. 
and Emory Jade catches Tiffany Razor off guard and now is looking for an opportunity. Sends her to the outside and Emory diving through sliding baseball kick and as our camera operators really attempt to keep track of this action here in the Glow Arena. And big there, punches being exchanged and Emory J with the rabbit punch running back into the ring. And well, that, that was Emory that knows, was pretty I smart Emory there. Knows, I think Emory knows this match ain't gonna be one on the outside, at least not with either of them advancing. Handful of hair and a, oh my god, look at that combination. Backbreaker and a lariat and now Tiffany Razor going up top the high rent district and now wanting Emery Jade to stand and catches her with a hurricane runner and she's folded up Emery kicks out and that there's that is the resiliency we talk about when we talk about Emery Jade being unbreakable and, and this is what I talk about with Tiffany Razor Tiffany just going for a maneuver like a Hurricane Rana that stacks up her opponent for a victory and then just, if it doesn't work, like flips a switch and starts throwing knees. It, it's frightening. It, it is frightening, but it's also effective. And, I mean, you can't dislike, or at least I can't dislike, a woman who is willing to have that level of effectiveness. And good God almighty, what a rolling forearm. Emory J just collapsed right in front of us. It, it took two seconds for her to hit the ground. And like, then she kicked out. That, that was pure instinct on her part. That had to be. Emory Jade, spite a miracle, kicks out after that vicious rolling elbow. And then able to back suplex Tiffany Racer in the center of the ring. And wait, headlock applied. Little bit of showboating there by Emery. Well, it, it was part showboating, but part leverage. Uh, just yeah. Leverage and dragging, dragging. Wait, wait, wait. We've seen her win with this move. We've seen her win with that arm trap cutter. Cover. One, two, is it over? Is it? It's over. It's over. And Emery Jade. Wow. Emery, Emery earned that victory right there. Emery took a heck of a beating, and Tiffany Razor certainly dealt one out. But in the end, that arm, single arm, straight jacket cutter just puts away Tiffany Razor and I've got to say I don't think that Tiffany Razor is going to necessarily stand for how Emory J just pulled out that victory but it I, is I, in the I, books and I can't say that I blame her for not standing for it but you're right it is in the books Emory Jade will be facing Tazila Mafila in the semifinals. And, and that will be on Cyclone Saturday night in exactly. the main event. And ladies and gentlemen, Cyclone Saturday night next week and Monday Night Melee is a can't miss if you have been tuning into the Mildred Burke Invitational these last few weeks. We want to thank everyone for supporting the Mildred Burke Invitational and thank everyone one of the call owners who have let us use your creations. Thank you. Bless you. You have given us an opportunity to do something that we've been talking about for almost a year. Thank you for letting us put this on and entertain the uh, viewers of the World Wide Wrestling Network and the larger uh, and the larger call and virtual wrestling communities. And in the words of Lord Cyrus of Moldova, stay safe. Stay safe. And, and stay, stay over. over.